Resuming debate, the Honorable Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Mr. Speaker, great to see you in the chair again. Mr. Speaker, I've been following this debate and the level of hypocrisy is over the top. I mean, Mr. Speaker, I recall all those trade deals that the Conservatives signed and what did they erase? All of the environmental provisions. I worked for the original Environment Commission um, in Montreal and I will note that in the new trail deal with the U.S., the Liberals undermined that deal too. So there's a lot of hypocrisy here about genuinely acting on the words. Mr. Speaker, I actually would like to speak to Bill C-57. I know it might come as a surprise, everybody's doing their electioneering here. But what I think is important is, it's one thing to bring forward a bill and it's another thing to enact it, but it's another thing to actually deliver the mandate and responsibilities under that bill. And Mr. Speaker, both the previous, previous Liberal government and the previous Conservative government and this Liberal government have abjectly failed to deliver on the responsibilities of sustainable development. It's not me saying this, it's the Commissioner for Environment and Sustainable Development that is appointed and re is retained in that position by the current Liberal government to review how well this government is delivering its responsibilities. And Mr. Speaker, I think it's also important to point out that in addition to the Sustainable Development Act, there is a second law, and I do remind this place that a cabinet directive is binding law. We proved that with the Friends of the Old Man decision, which was uh, a directive by cabinet on environmental assessment before we had the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act. And we proved in the Supreme Court that cabinet directives are legally binding. So there has been in place a cabinet directive on environmental assessment of policy plan and programs for decades. But successive both conservative and liberal governments have abjectly failed to deliver on that as well. And that comes in the reports from the Commissioner on Environment and Sustainable Development. Now, Mr. Speaker, the liberals, of course, signed on yet again. They love to go to these international meetings and they signed on to the Sustainable Development Agenda 2030 17 goals, they signed on to that September uh, 2015. Did they empower them? Maybe it was, that was the Conservatives that did that. Um, committing to 169 targets and 230 indicators. There are a lot of goals in that uh, international agreement. Now, we need to note here that despite an amendment that I tabled at committee, this government refused to incorporate any reference in this bill we're discussing here today to that UN commitment, the Sustainable Development 2030 Agenda. So there is so much for the commitment. Now, Mr. Speaker, I had wanted to raise this with a number of the speakers who stood up, the Conservatives criticizing the Liberals, the Liberals criticizing the Conservatives. Since 2015, and I'm only starting at 2015, the Commissioner has delivered failing grades in her audits of government's commitments to actually deliver on their responsibilities both under the Sustainable Development Act and the Cabinet Directive. In the fall of 2015, she found abject failure by four departments audited to even apply the Cabinet Directive, and zero assessments delivered for 488 proposals to the, to the Fisheries Minister, only one out of over 1,000 proposals to the Minister of Agriculture. 2016, she found only 23% of proposals had audited, had submitted the required strategic environmental assessment. 2017, she found a mere 20% compliance by federal departments. Last year, 2018, the commissioner's latest report, she found that the government of Canada, the Liberal government, had failed to even develop a formal approach to implementing the 2030 agenda and the goals. A very narrow interpretation of sustainable development. You heard that today in the debate pretty narrow discussion of what's actually in there. No federal government structure. You're not going to see that in the bill either. Although interestingly, this bill continues to give responsibility to the Minister of Environment, and yet it's another minister that goes off to the UN and, and is speaking to the bill as if it's his responsibility. Lots of confusion out there among Canadians about who in this government is actually responsible for delivering on the responsibilities for sustainable development. Very limited national consultation and engagement, she found. No national implementation plan, few national targets, no system in place to measure, monitor, or report on national targets for sustainable development. 
So we hear a lot of blathering on and on here today about how the important the environment and the economy is that we hear from the Liberals. But where is the commitment to actually deliver on those responsibilities? So fine, eventually we're going to have a debate on this bill. And interestingly, Mr. Speaker, a good number of the amendments that are coming forward from the Senate to this place are exactly the same amendments that I put forward that they rejected. <laughs> so, so much for we're all in this together in committee. Um, I do note, Mr. Speaker, um, one that's most interesting is the Senate uh, presented this place a series of three amendments, two of which were accepted. The third one was one that the Green Party representative and myself actually tabled as an amendment to the bill because this government in its wisdom, they talk about being environmentally thoughtful when they're spending, environmentally thoughtful in procurement. They are removing the requirement that is in the law right now that they actually consider sustainable development when they are procuring. So let's think about that. Almost five billion to buy a pipeline. Oh, you might think, maybe they might think about, is this a wise investment economically and environmentally? Where's the strategic environmental assessment of that purchase? How about the many infrastructure banks they're setting up for private enterprise here in other countries? Did they do a strategic environmental assessment as per the cabinet directive? No. So the question here is, where is the real commitment by the government of the day to genuinely deliver on these big promises they made to Canadians, big promises they make when they go to the UN meetings. Mr. Speaker, I attended the consultation at the UN, the big summit last summer in the United Nations. And the government sent a big delegation. At the last second, they invited youth, and so there was only a handful who could come because they could afford to come. And so there has been a call, can we please have better consultation and engagement across Canada so that everybody can participate in this discussion. And when you look at the goals, we're not just talking about the economy, we're not just talking about the environment. When you look at those 17 goals, they cover everything. They cover indigenous rights, they cover women's rights, they cover agriculture, they cover water. And I'm not hearing any debate in this house about the whole breadth of what we have committed to in the 2030 goals. Well, they refuse to reference those in this bill. There's a second matter that they have refused to reference despite the amendments that I tabled at committee. They have refused to incorporate into this bill the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. That's, that's one of the goals under the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, Indigenous Rights, and yet they abjectly refuse to specifically reference that international commitment. And that's despite the fact that their former Justice Minister, their Attorney General, actually committed before the Assembly of First Nations that coming forward, her Liberal government would ensure that the United Nations Declaration would be incorporated into every federal law. Well, they've broken that promise too. So, Mr. Speaker, it's all very nice. You know, we have some amendments coming from the Senate. They're basically pro forma. They're simply saying we need to update this bill so it, it uh, is the same as the current Auditor General bill. But when it comes to substantive measures, like being required to actually consider sustainable development when you are making major pro procurement decisions, when you're making major recommendations to Cabinet, no. They're abjectly failing. So I would have liked to have heard anybody in the government of the day standing up and saying, going forward, we're going to finally deliver on our responsibilities. I did not hear that once today. So thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it was my honor to speak to this again. I remain committed to actually having a government in Canada that is sincere about delivering on its international commitments. Thank you very much.